lot of people think when they register their company name, they've protected their trademark. And a company name and a trademark are very different. And in fact, in the Trademarks Act, it specifically says registration of a company name does not provide you with any trademark rights. Now, the reason for that is often someone will register a company name, but they'll tra trade under something else. So they have company name, trading as, and it's the trading as which they build the reputation up. So if anything, they would have had the trademark, trademark rights in the name that they've been using in the marketplace because under the Fair Trading Act or passing off, you've got to have reputation. That's the, the, the first string in the test to take an infringement case. So yes, it is a common sort of mistake that people think just because they've registered their company name that they've, they've protected it and also that they can use it because also when you register a company name, the company's office doesn't do a market search or a trademark register search to make sure no one's using a similar trademark or doesn't have similar trade, a similar trademark for which they've got rights. So you could potentially register a company name, go out, start using it, and be infringing someone else's rights and, and get a nasty cease and desist letter or get yourself in trouble. A good way of searching to see if no one else is using a similar brand in the marketplace is just to do general marketplace searches. And the power of the internet these days is fantastic. Um, a Google search can't be underestimated. Just type in the brand you're thinking about um, and do a New Zealand search and you're going to find a lot of things. If, 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 if the other company using a similar trademark is pretty large, chances are you might find it. Also, most um, business owners, like the owner of the, the Lucy Lou business, they'll know their industry well. It's just one of those things. So they should just actually ask themselves too. Look, have I heard or seen anything similar? And ask around, ask other people in your industry. Because generally speaking, to infringe someone's trademark rights has got to be a similar uh, f a field of business. So uh, I think you generally find that the experts in a particular industry are those people who are looking to set up there. They know, they know their industry, they generally do. But do that Google search. So that's your marketplace sort of surveillance. The next step is to do a trademark register search. Now you can do the trademark register search by, by going onto the IPONS website and we have a trademark section and you can go in there and there's a search facility so you can go online and all trademarks that are registered or have been applied for on the New Zealand Trademarks Register can be searched there. And there's some good guidance on how you can search looking for phonetic, uh, phonetically similar marks and the like. To infringe someone's rights there you don't necessarily have to use an identical mark, it can be just a mark that's too similar. So you're not just looking for the identical mark, your search should be a little bit broader looking for marks that are sufficiently similar that traders might, uh, sorry, that consumers in the marketplace might be a bit confused because the whole notion of a trademark is it has to be able to identify one particular trader's goods and services. Mm. If it can't function as that identifier for that one trader, then it's not working as a trademark and that's when you run into problems. The question of how you should register your mark, where you should register it as a plain word mark or maybe uh, just a a logo or maybe text within a logo, um, that's, that's a question that you have to think about quite carefully. Generally speaking, what we'd call a plain, plain word mark, which is just plain text, so you could register, say, Lucy Lou, you just register the words Lucy Lou without a device or a logo. That's, that's often the most attractive way to register a trademark, and the reason for that is it gives the broadest protection, because to infringe that word mark, someone need only use confusingly similar words if they were likely to cause you know, confusion or deception. If someone used a similar similar words that was likely to be confused, then chances are that would infringe that registration. So that's a nice broad registration. It wouldn't matter how they use those words. They could do them in big pink writing or or whatever form. As long as they were confusingly similar words to Lucy Lou and that use was such that it was likely to deceive or confuse consumers, then chances are that would infringe. So that's a nice, strong, powerful broad registration. The more logos and extra material you get, and once you start using extra material, stylize, you know, stylization or with a logo, we call that a device mark is the terminology. Um, with the device mark, they have to use a confusingly similar mark to that, that whole device. So it's got to look and sound similar and have the similar word elements. So it's a, it's a bit more of a restricted right. So business owners like Lucy Lou, when they're, they're thinking about how they're going to file their trademark, have to think about these issues. And a common strategy, say, for someone like Lucy, Lucy Lou with her brand, they might want to register the word mark Lucy Lou plus the device mark, which includes the word Lucy Lou but has some stylized elements to it as well. Now, a trademark covers brands and logos, basically badges that distinguish one trader from another. Um, copyright protects um, artistic works. Um, 
or um, original works, I should say. So music, songs, pictures, um, written works and the like. Um, patents, they protect inventions, ideas, clever inventions that are patentable. So they're all, those three different rights cover quite different things. However, they can overlap a little. Um, now, in the context of trademarks, copyright's more relevant. For example, you, you, know, you go into a graphic designer and say, please come up with a really good looking logo for me. Well, that logo will be deemed an artistic work under the Copyright Act. So there'll be copyright in that artistic work being the logo. Um, and you could register it as a trademark as well and have trademark protection too. So you'd have two types of protection. Um, but the trademark would be protecting it in terms of its um, function as a badge of trade origin, whereas the copyright protection will just be saying it's an artistic work and it's, if someone used something that was deemed to be sub substantially identical to that copyright work, then infringe your copyright as well. But it ra raises an interesting question. If you do go to your graphic designer and say, can you come up with a great logo for me, you want to make sure that your contract with that graphic designer ensures that you own the logo. Otherwise you go to register the trademark or maybe 10, 10 years down the track you go to sell it and you get a letter from your graphic designer saying, hey, I own the copyright. So it's just one of those little loose ends you want to make sure it's all tidied up. You can tell when someone actually does have uh, a registered trademark, generally speaking, because normally if, if a company or a person has gone to the effort of registering their trademark, once their mark is registered, they're entitled to use the registered trademark symbol, which is the R with a circle. Now what that denotes is that they've, they've gone through the registration process and they have registered trademark rights under the Trademarks Act. Now the, most companies or individuals will tell you they've got registered trademark rights because they are the strongest trademark rights you can have. Um, if, it doesn't mean to say that someone um, doesn't have trademark rights if they haven't registered their trademark. Now in that case, often they'll have nothing they won't put anything after the trademark, or they might put TM. TM doesn't signify trademark uh, rights, it, um, sorry, um, registered trademark rights. It just signifies that that trader considers that, that, that trademark to be a trademark of their company, and they're putting their competitors on notice that were they to use something similar that they might infringe, say, their, their rights under the Fair Trading Act.